Daytime naps are so important for little one's overall sleep. Not enough daytime sleep can lead to terrible nights, so how do you know how much your little one needs, how often, and when it changes, because they're growing all the time? I'll answer all of that for you in this episode, so stay tuned to get clear on how to help your little one get the sleep he or she really needs. Babies nap a lot in the early weeks and most children need some form of daytime sleep until somewhere between three to four years old. The old-fashioned myth of wearing a little one out to help them sleep well at night couldn't be further from the truth and is often the cause of early wakings, bedtime battles and disturbed nights. But did you know it's not just about getting enough daytime sleep hours clocked, it's also important that it is spaced out right for your little one. Starting with newborns, they tend to only manage around 45 minutes of awake time between sleeps, but the naps can be really varied. Sleep takes 12 to 18 weeks to become more organised in many cases, but you can encourage this by getting into a good rhythm with your baby from the start. Feeding your baby when he or she wakes from sleeps, having some activity time and putting them down for a sleep again is a great rhythm or pattern to get into from morning time and through the day with the only feed that comes before sleep being the bedtime feed. When your baby gets into a rhythm, it makes for more efficient feeds and more nourishing naps too. Okay, so I appreciate it's not always as simple as that. And with all the best intentions, the baby wakes after just 30 minutes of nap time. This is hugely common, particularly in babies under six months. Why? There are a few possible reasons, but one to be aware of is the onset of sleep. When your baby is put to sleep, for instance, by rocking or feeding or motion, something that you do to or for him or her, this lulls them off. And then after around 30 minutes, they're moving through from deep sleep into the lighter phase of their sleep cycle. And instead of seeing that through to the end of the sleep cycle at sort of 45 to 60 minutes, they effectively slip out of sleep and find themselves awake. They cry out to let you know because they don't know how to get back off to sleep and they need you to do that thing again to get them back into slumber. The challenge is sometimes the baby will be done with that sleep and other times they'll want more. So it's a good idea to encourage a resettle if you don't think your baby has finished the nap. How to tell? They might be extra cranky or unhappy if they weren't really finished sleeping. Waking happy is a good sign that they were done for now with that sleep. 30 minutes usually isn't enough, but if you're getting 45 minute naps with a baby under six months, then you're doing well. I'm gonna share with you how to navigate naps and what to do when a baby wakes too soon from a nap. So stick around for those tips. But before that, here's a guide to naps beyond six months and through toddlerhood. So by around six months, we want to see more organized sleep and wakeful windows, which typically work well as three naps per day, equating to three and a half to four hours, sometimes a little more. The first two naps are the longer ones, with the third nap of the day often being the more challenging and the shorter nap. It's going to be the first nap to go when they're around eight to 10 months too. They're constantly growing and stretching their stamina in the day, but at six months, they can manage around 90 minutes to two hours awake between sleeps. Naps work well at this age at around an hour and a quarter to an hour and a half in length for the first and second nap, and anything from 30 minutes or more for that third nap. I'll always teach parents to navigate naps day to day by bringing the next sleep earlier if the previous sleep was shorter than planned. So you reduce that wakeful period and avoid overtiredness. You're more likely to see a better or longer nap if you get your little one down at the optimal time, not too soon before they're even ready and not too late when they've gone into a second wind. So eight to 10 months is the time the third nap usually goes and they settle onto a two nap routine equating to about three hours of daytime sleep and no more than three hours awake between sleeps. This transition is pretty naturally occurring, but the next one dropping from two naps down to one can be longer winded and more complex. So definitely check out my episode on that transition for tips on getting your toddler through that change. 
Once they make the move to one nap, it tends to start off being around two and a half, sometimes three hours long, but soon settles to a two to two and a half hour nap right in the middle of their day. Toddlers need two hours a day throughout age two, which is a handy rule of thumb to remember because no two year old wants to nap, but they do need to. <laughs> Children usually nap in the day um, at least until age three. It might naturally reduce in length, but until age three, they'll get overtired if they go all day without a nap. And this will be the reason they fight sleep at bedtime or wake a lot at night or wake at five every morning. <laughs> Some will drop the nap at age three, while others will hold on to it until age four or even four and a half. The especially alert ones who appear not to need so much sleep, they actually need it more than their easygoing peers. So don't compare your child to others, they're all unique. To help you to get your little ones sleeping at their best, check out the link for our free sleep guide and get these simple steps into implementation, get them going right away. So how do you get a baby back to sleep if they wake before the nap is really done. Have your response ready and planned so that you can respond to your baby in the same way every time he or she wakes and needs to resettle. By bringing this consistent response to them, they'll soon get used to what they're supposed to do and initially with your help, they'll go back off to sleep and finish the nap. Try with your response for 40 to 60 minutes, no more, no less. If you've been trying to resettle your baby for an hour with no luck, Step away for 60 seconds, then return and get your baby up. Just note when you ought to try for the next nap because it may need to be sooner due to the previous nap falling short. If you think of your little one as having a sleep tank, your aim is to keep it topped up and not let it run dry. If naps go wrong or don't happen, or if they wake up super early in the morning and the day is set to be too long, then you can Add in a top-up nap early or later in the day or get them to bed a little earlier. Just be mindful not to let them overstretch their wakeful window too often and also shorten it when the nap didn't go so well. It's about having one eye on the time and one eye on your child. They do show signs of being tired but often not until it's actually too late and past the ideal window to settle to sleep. Some very alert little ones don't show any signs of being sleepy, and some little ones are so tired all the time that they're fractious and clingy and miserable all day. It is good to read the signs, but don't wait for them or rely solely on them. Know your timings, watch the clock, and match this up with your little one's needs. How old is your little napper, and what challenges are you experiencing? We'd love to hear from you, so head over to the blog and leave us your thoughts and comments. I'll catch you next week for another episode of The Sleep Nanny Show. And until then, stay happy and healthy and sleep soundly. Thanks so much for watching. If you've liked anything about this episode, then please leave a comment below and hit subscribe for more episodes like this. If any of your friends would benefit from seeing this video, then please do share it with them using the hashtag TheSleepNanny. And we look forward to seeing you again real soon.